Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Puyan Jamshidi, and I'm assistant professor at the University of South Carolina. And today I'm going to talk about robust causal transfer learning. And this work uh, is about identifying causal invariances across environments. Uh, I am a director for AI Lab, where we looked at uh, many different exciting topics at the intersection of machine learning systems and autonomy. More specifically, we looked into transfer learning, causal invariances, structural learning, concept learning, and physics informed uh, deep learning. And uh, our research project is funded by NSF and NASA. And thanks to these, uh, we are very excited to work on these very exciting topics. Today, uh, most popular systems are built uh, configurable. Uh, more specifically, we have big data systems of, such as Apache Hadoop. Um, many robotics applications are highly configurable, as well as more recently, uh, machine learning systems are also built essentially highly configurable. Let's look at more details about, for example, Apache Hadoop in this case. Here you see a bunch of different uh, configuration options. For example, here we have the number of threads currently is set for 64, but we can obviously change it to 32 or some other integer numbers. We also have here the size of the memory um, set to a specific value, but obviously the end user can essentially change and, this, and see the result in terms of performance uh, influences toward, it, toward this. And this bunch of different uh, configuration options is only a very tiny amount of the whole configuration space of the system. People uh, looked at the change in terms of the number of configuration options over time, over the evolution of the system. For example, in this empirical study, Tianjin looked at Apache Hadoop, uh, from version that was released in 2006 uh, to the version that was released in 2014. And he observed that only within um, less than 10 years, the number of options has increased from something around 18 to 180. So this means that the whole configuration space in terms of size has increased massively to over 162 times um, bigger with respect to the size that we have for the same system in 2006. And this trend uh, was similar across different systems from a storage system to MySQL and Apache web server. So this was not specifically restricted to Hadoop, but for a very different varieties of of systems. To the extent that even some developers uh, claim that everything should be made configurable, and we know why that is the key reason. Mainly, uh, the stakeholder of such system wants to build um, a pipeline, a highly configurable system, so they can easily customize and make the system fit for many variety different end users without much change in the code base. And this actually makes sense from business perspective. But let's look at what do we mean by a configuration option or a configuration essentially. So in this piece of code, we see that uh, by changing this only single configuration option, we can determine whether one line of code get executed or several lines of code get executed. And if the end user cares about different uh, performance metrics, such as a speed and energy consumption, they are interested to know by changing the configuration whether they get boost in terms of performance or maybe the uh, energy consumption may deteriorate as a result. So um, the performance trade-off matters, but important thing is that optimizing performance and reasoning about performance is not easy. And the reason is that this performance landscape is crazy. 
For example, it's nonlinear, non-convex, and multimodal. So you see that there are lots of different valleys here. And it is very easy for any optimizer to get trapped in one of these local optima. We obviously, by looking at the whole landscape, we know that the global optimal is located here. We want to decrease the latency. Uh, and if we start somewhere here, it's not difficult to get trapped in, in either of these local uh, optima. Uh, so how to escape these local optima and how to get there um, is the task that uh, any performance engineer is interested in. So the purpose of our work is to understand performance behavior and also scale it uh, to larger system and uh, reason about performance behavior and also making trade-offs within these um, highly configurable systems. Let me um, look at very specific system that I have been dealing with several years ago. This system was called social sensors. Actually, it has several different users were interested into trending topics and they were interested defining also new topics. And um, they were also needed to search through social media for the subscribed content. Let's look at the architecture of the system. Uh, the system has a crawler um, that crawls social media uh, from internet and uh, store the content into something su such as Apache Cassandra, which is a storage system. And it has also an orchestrator based on Apache Storm uh, that periodically fetch content from Apache Cassandra and push it to some down the line content analysis. That this content analysis was also powered by Apache Solar and end user were interested to search through and integrate this social sensor to other uh, third party applications. But more importantly, um, the stakeholder of the system um, based on some increase in terms of trend uh, for this application, they realized that they need to scale this application up. They were interested to increase the number of users to 100 times more. And based on this analysis, uh, we identify that in order to make this happen, we need to make the crawling speed 10 times faster, and we need to make this fetching time closer to real time. Currently, it was 100k per to, to its per 10 minutes, which was quite a slow uh, for this system in order to scale to this number. Obviously, uh, one easy solution is to throw more server, buy more server, pay more money, and increase the performance that they wanted. Um, but we were actually interested into something else, whether we can change configuration, whether we can optimize configuration to get a better performance without any change in terms of resources. So uh, let's look at opportunities, what we have here. Um, we have Apache Cassandra, we have Storm, and we have Apache Solar. These are engines, big data engines, where all are highly configurable, and they expose many different uh, configuration options. Each of them assume that they expose 100 binary options. And even with this simplistic assumption, we know that the total number of configuration for this pipeline, for this compose system, is consists of two over 300 different uh, configurations. And we know that this number of configuration is more than number of atoms, estimated number of atoms in the universe, which is huge. So where to start, whether this is the best configuration or this one or that one or that one. So it's difficult to reason about performance within this massive configuration space. So uh, let's look at some random configuration of the system, specifically for Apache Cassandra. Um, this 
uh, is the default configuration. And here we have um, a landscape of latency, right latency and throughput. Obviously we want to increase throughput and we want to decrease the right latency, right? Um, so these, these configurations are typically ideal. Um, so this was the um, default configuration, which we know that it's bad because it's upper percentile with respect to the right lat latency and lower percentile with respect to the throughput. Also op optimal configuration here, which is um, hugely different from the worst configuration of the system and noticeably faster than the median configuration. And more importantly, this red dot is the configuration that was recommended by the domain expert. So we expected that domain expert, at least with the massive amount of experience that um, he had, uh, he was able to recommend a reasonable configuration. I mean, this configuration was reasonable with respect to the right latency, but nowhere near optimal with respect to the throughput. Um, so there are essentially some optimization opportunities here that if we could find a good configuration such as this, we are able to boost the performance of the system. At the end, we develop a performance optimization approach um, all things were, uh, were good. They were able to uh, scale up the system um, and even serve 100 times more users for the system, um, not even increasing the resources, but also decreasing the resources to 20% uh, of what they had. And obviously in, in, in those cases, um, they configuration that was recommended by the tool that we developed was much better performing than the configuration by the expert uh, that they had. So what I conveyed was that performance optimization uh, is good. Um, there are lots of opportunities there, but there are some nuances as well. So for these highly configurable systems, uh, for example, we looked at uh, several blog posts um, and uh, issue reports uh, for NVIDIA systems. Um, mainly these are uh, machine learning systems based on deep neural networks uh, that were deployed on NVIDIA hardware, like TX1, TX2, Xavier. Um, in this particular case, uh, in this bug report, um, one of those users uh, wanted to transfer from TX1 to TX2. And we know that TX2 has much more resources than TX1. So they expected to receive roughly around 30 to 40% boost in terms of performance. Not only they did not observe that, but also they observed a slower performance uh, for the inference of, uh, of the task. So it was an image processing task that we're running on, on this piece of hardware. And after a struggling a lot to find the cause, the real cause, they find out that the real cause is misconfiguration, meaning that some of the options such as uh, flag for the CUDA, some GPU, CPU uh, options, as well as some fan mode options were set incorrectly in this target hardware. So this misconfiguration actually caused the performance bug. Not only that, but also finding the fix for these performance faults were actually costly, very difficult. It took more than a month to find a good configuration that could fix the bug. Um, so it was a very challenging task. Um, and to clarify, um, as I mentioned before, performance behavior are multimodal. So typically we have many good configuration, but also have considerable bad configuration, not only for latency, but also the same for 
energy consumption. And if you look at the landscape in multi-objective space, we have many configurations that are located in a good zone, um, good zone of this landscape, but we have also considerable number of uh, configurations that shows uh, and manifest some latency faults, as well as some energy faults, as well as some faults that are worse with respect to several objectives. For example, in this case, these configurations are bad with respect to the latency. You see that these are higher with respect to the latency, and these are bad with respect to the energy consumption as well. So the energy consumption of these configuration are considerably high. Um, so we have such considerable number of configurations that expose such performance faults. But these faults could be misleading if we only look at the correlation, if we only rely on statistics. Let's have a particular example. In this case, we have GPU growth and swap memory. Both of these uh, options, both of these variables are correlated with latency. Latency is the performance metric we want to predict. And when somebody look at the data, see that yes, both of them are correlated with latency and even GPU growth is correlated in a nicer way, meaning that the variance of the prediction is lower. So this means that this data is less biased. Um, one may say that, hey, GPU growth is a better predictor. Let's use this in performance modeling. And then uh, we find out that GPU growth is not really the cause of change of latency. Actually, the swap memory is the cause. And GPU growth is only correlated with latency because both latency and GPU growth have common cause. So this is a known structure in BaseNet where we have multiple variables which have a common cause. And this could be correlated due to the, this common cause. Uh, but this variable is not actually a cause of this uh, other variable that we are interested to predict. So it's any statistical approaches which are based on correlation but not causation and ignore this causal structure could be technically misleading uh, for some cases. Even more uh, interesting scenario could come into place in transfer learning. For example, in this case, we have two variable x1 and x3 in the source. This, just look at these green uh, uh, crosses. Uh, in the source, we see that both are correlated with the target variable. x2 here is target variable, right? And here, if you look at the data in the source, one may say that, hey, X3 is a better predictor for X2. And if I want to sacrifice, um, maybe I either consider X3 or maybe both X1 and X3. But no one say that um, let's pick only X1 because this is very noisy. The variance of the prediction is high. Um, and if we move to the target, one very interesting scenario can happen. In this case, these blue dots uh, are the target distribution. And we see that in the target, the distribution of X3 has changed dramatically. Um, so the distribution of these, um, right, uh, has changed dramatically in, in, uh, in the, in, in the target, right? Previously, it was like this. So as we increase the X3, uh, X2 was increasing, but not anymore in the target. Uh, as a result, any prediction that incorporate X3, uh, and that was the case for both scenarios um, that we discussed uh, in the source is 
going to be providing very, very bad prediction for the target variable because both of them involve X3. And X3 has changed dramatically in terms of distribution in the target environment. So this could be very misleading uh, when we move to the target environment. Based on this observation, we developed Copper. Copper is actually exploiting the causal structure in the, uh, in the data. Uh, is uh, for causal performance debugger that does two things. First, localize the uh, causes of performance fault and also repairs these performance faults automatically, incorporating the causal structure uh, that has been uh, observed uh, by the performance data. And we use this causal structure in an active learning uh, loop um, that iteratively we improve this causal structure and we define some uh, counterfactual queries. These counterfactual queries are potential repairs for the performance faults. And after we exhausted all the budget, um, this provide uh, some repair that are more likely to repair the performance faults that the system has been observed. More specifically, we exploit such causal structure where we have some target variable like performance metric, latency, energy consumption, and heat. We have some configuration options that we can intervene upon. Uh, these are the options that we can change, deploy the system, and collect performance metric. Uh, and we have some options that we cannot intervene, but we only can observe. These are events at the uh, kernel level uh, that sometimes it's impossible to intervene upon. If you are interested to know more about this causal structure discovery, you can look at these papers uh, by Muhammad Ali Javidian uh, that we discussed in more detail how such causal structure could be discovered from data. And more specifically, we rely, as I mentioned, the key here is based on the potential repair based on counterfactual queries. So we define some counterfactual query with the hope that they can fix the bug. And the important thing is that based on this causal structure, we can estimate these probabilities um, and then we can calculate this metric. We rank the metric and we prioritize the potential repairs uh, that is likely to find better uh, performance for the system. And we continue until we exhaust the whole budget. Some results. First, Cooper was able to find more accurate causes comparing with some statistical debugging approaches. So it provided better accuracy, recall, and precision in different environments um, and also for different systems, mainly machine learning system as well as some uh, video encoder and uh, SQL light. But more importantly, when we compared uh, Cooper with some performance optimization such as a SMAC, we were able to either get similar performance gain or in some cases much better performance gain where the workload was larger uh, with respect to all the performance objectives and more importantly, this performance gain actually came with less cost. And by cost is the time that it took to find these repairs. Uh, so you see here that the uh, copper was able to find this repair in much shorter time than uh, performance optimizer like a SMAC which is a state of the art performance optimization approach. So this is a collaboration uh, between AICs, uh, also some fantastic collaborators such as Rahul and Baishaki from Columbia University, um, Shahriar um, and uh, Muhammad Ali Javidian uh, is also involved in this for this uh, Cooper um, work is actually led by Rahul and Shahriar 
and Muhammad Ali is contributing toward the theoretical aspect of the work. And the whole performance uh, work that I and my team has been doing in the past several years, actually uh, we were collaborating with Christian, Norbert, Miguel, Sven, Lars, and Marco, and we thank them a lot for their contribution to our work. So to summarize, uh, I started by uh, mentioning that many uh, systems are now co highly configurable. I mentioned about the difficulties of uh, optimizing performance for such systems. Uh, I also discussed about uh, a statistical debugging and how this could be uh, misleading um, and why exploiting causal structure might be useful here. And I also concluded the work uh, by mentioning how incorporating causal structure could give us the power to find the root causes and find a repair for them. Thank you very much. And I'm looking forward for your question. Thanks a lot.